So I understand that I'm late to the party with this one, but I think that should be pretty obvious as to why. <laughs> You're too So, obviously, with the global pandemic that is still going on uh, in the world, um, obviously Yu-Gi-Oh! has been heavily affected by this in the fact that uh, physical tournaments obviously can't take place because of uh, the, the restrictions that are, that are in place with social distancing, with the lockdowns in the different regions, and so on and so forth. And it really brought up a very interesting... Um, Kind of situation that no one, no card game has ever really been um, been able to experience before, and it's had to cause a lot of different things that people haven't really thought about. Um, and when it comes to Yu-Gi-Oh, I think the game itself is at probably the biggest dis biggest disadvantage to any card game that probably exists right now that, you know, some of the big ones like Vanguard, Magic, Pokemon, so on and so forth. When this first kind of kicked off and um, when everyone was obviously, uh, you know, thinking about how this would, would all kick off and how it would play out, uh, right at the start I was thinking, oh well, you know, this might be the thing that finally pushes the company to really look into an official online simulator or a downloadable simulator or something that um, basically facilitates online play for the player base because this is going to go on for quite a while. It does look like the social distancing thing might be there for another good, like say, three odd months, let's say. Um, I know that obviously the, the limit and the distance that people can technically social distance is different in different parts of the world. It's one meter, 1.2 and two meters here in the UK, but I don't think that's actually going to last very long in the UK. I think we're probably gonna go down to one meter very soon. The interesting thing that I thought, I was like, well, finally, this might be the time for Konami to really invest in a online simulator. There's obviously many unofficial online simulators out there. You've got a dueling book. You've got um, another one that I can't actually remember. The, the Project Ignis, that's it, the EDO Pro. You've got a couple of different ones out there that are available, um, but there's nothing official, nothing that is officially recognized by Konami. Now, I remember when this first kicked off and people were like, well, Konami should speak to Dueling Book, kind of agree on something, um, and, you know, try and strike a deal. That was never going to happen. Some, well, some people might not understand the way that Konami works, but being, or using a, well, the feasibility of using a unofficial platform that they don't have any control over is never going to work. It's just never going to happen. A company like Konami will never put their hands or, or potentially leave themselves open to risk to a platform that isn't official and controlled by them. And I don't think Dueling Buck are going to really hand over all the reins to Konami unless they bought it and that's just not going to happen. Konami are a company that like to have absolute control over every single situation that they really enter into. Um, Yu-Gi-Oh! has been locked down in a lot of senses for a long, long time, uh, and has always been behind the times to other games. If you look at something like Pokemon, for example, they fully embrace content creators, they fully embrace, um, you know, the, the, the champions that play the game, they integrate them in by doing different things. Fan Fantasy do that as well. They make cards out of the World Championship players. They, you know, they really integrate it in that. With Yu-Gi-Oh, they're very much behind the step of everyone, honestly. Now, obviously, in recent times, say the past year or so, uh, they've done, Konami have done so much better with uh, allowing themselves to open up to content creators, to the community and so on and so forth. And I think that should be applauded. Um, but let's not forget how far behind they are. And I think that they were kind of forced into it more than anything because of how far behind they were being left by everyone else. But it's good that they still did it anyway. It's good that they have players, uh, content creators um, on their social media. It's good that they have them on commentary, X player, so on and so forth. That's all promising. The problem inherently with Konami, I think, is the higher ups. Everything has to be approved from up here. And it doesn't matter what's happening down here in the Konami ranks, it all has to go up first and be approved. And if it's not approved, that's it. Game over, never happening. Now, I am speaking as someone who is obviously outside the company. I've never really had 
uh, any real proper dealings with the system of Konami bar a couple of times where I've, I've been there or talked to employees. I think for the most part, everyone is, is got their head screwed on. They, they know what they're doing and they do have, you know, I would like to think they have the best intentions of the game at, at heart. Who wouldn't? But I do think there's that just overarching lords of, of Konami that just don't allow things to happen. And herein lies one of the problems with the online simulator. I don't think the owners of the game really ever want to consider Yu-Gi-Oh! being a non-physical platform that you play on. I think the whole idea is that it's always going to be a physical thing that you play. You have the cards, you physically have to own the cards to be able to play the game. Now, obviously there's lots of ways that a online dueling uh, platform can work. Like Pokemon, for example, let's just, and everyone has pretty much got the same platforms in, in, in place, but let's just do Pokemon because that's one that I know well. Um, they have an online program, or they have a program that you download onto your computer, works on all operating systems. Download it, then you have different decks. You can play offline modes where you just play little campaigns, you can play against computers, so on and so forth, but then there's obviously the online ones. In that, you uh, win packs, you win uh, decks, you can do certain challenges to get certain points and so on and so forth, and then you accumulate in-game currency so you can buy things. But then you can also use real-world money to buy things as well. In a Pokemon pack as well, you also get in every Pokemon pack that you buy, a physical one, you get a code that gets you a free pack online as well, which is a really good incentive uh, because it means that you're integrating into both platforms. That's just one way of generating revenue. And I really struggle to understand the rationale in this day and age in 2020 where everything is digital with not having some form of online platform, an official one at that, that Konami aren't monetizing. There are so many revenue streams that could be made from an online simulator, an official one, that Konami could utilize. And I am struggling in this day and age to understand why they aren't doing it. Given the global pandemic, I thought this would be the perfect opportunity for them to do it. I would think, cool, okay, well, there's obviously going to be um, development time, there's obviously going to be um, testing phases, and it's not going to be rolled out in just a month. But I thought, you know, in four or five months, I thought they might be able to do something with it. Um, obviously, Japan were, in the, well, the Asians in general, they were uh, before the UK for the COVID, that we were about a month or two behind them in cases, in uh, how everything was ramping up. So, you know, they had a head start on everything and they could have potentially planned something out. Now, I'm not saying that doing a online simulator is just like that. It's super simple, everyone's doing it, don't worry about it. There are obviously a lot of challenges, a lot of red tape that are included in that. Obviously with the lockdown, people can't really work, not a lot of stuff that can be done. So I'm not saying that this is something that is super simple and can just be drawn up in a matter of days takes a lot of time, I understand that. I used to do game development, so I understand how this all works, but I don't think that's actually the problem. I don't think the resources are the problem. I don't think the development time is the problem. I think the approval is the problem, and that has always been the problem with this company, from what I can see, from my standpoint. It might not be the case. I might be completely wrong, and I completely accept that, and if I am, no problem at all, I'll put my hands up. That's my personal opinion on how I see the state of play. The remote duel uh, kind of concept and solution that seemingly they came up with, in my opinion, is nothing short of just pathetic. Honestly, I think it's really, really bad. And here's why, for multiple reasons. Firstly, it's essentially Skype dueling. This is something that has been around for a very long time and anyone who has played Skype dueling before, I think I did it a couple of times as a joke, it's awful, it's horrific. You're also relying on the person on the other side of you to be honest and to, you know, actually be a good duelist and unfortunately, as every game has, no matter what, a card game, online, whatever, there's not a lot of many people, like honest people on there. There are people that do take advantage and having that form of like platform is super easy to be able to cheat. Have everything in view as you want, but outside of that area that that webcam can see, anything could be happening. The requirements sounded so simple. Get a webcam, get a microphone, get a, like a tripod stand or something like that, 
uh, have a computer, and then off you go, right? Everyone's got that. Well, here's where I think, oh, of, of course, an internet connection that can, you know, stabilize it. Here's where I see the problem. I actually think this remote dueling is more of a negative and um, exclusive kind of form of dueling than inclusive. It's not actually as easy as you think. So let's just look over what you need. As I said, you need a webcam. Not everyone actually has a webcam. The other thing is not everyone actually has a good webcam. If anyone has looked at online streaming, if anyone has looked at just kind of streaming in general, a decent webcam and kind of the, the gold standard is a Logitech C920. That is normally one of the gold standards of streaming. It's a 1080p webcam, very good. That's normally about 50 to 60 pounds. Anything below that, you're looking at a 720p webcam. And then in lies then the first problems is that quality. Quality for a webcam and for this type of streaming is incredibly important. If your picture is blurry, if your picture is out of focus, if your picture isn't well lit, it's going to look awful and it's going to be a very bad time for your opponent because they can't really see what the hell is going on, especially the fact that it's going to be zoomed out because it needs to see an entire mat. So someone has to invest a plus 50 pounds into a good webcam. Well, that's the first problem. That's unfair to do. Second thing is a stand. Now, a lot of people will think, well, how do you get that top-down view? Only until a year or two ago, even content creators and very famous ones couldn't do that top-down view. They hadn't thought of a good way around it because a lot of the solutions out there, not that great. Now, obviously, webcam, uh, now, obviously, tripods can turn, they, you know, they can angle the whole thing. That's one of my webcams there, uh, one of my tripods there. Also, I've got an actual locking arm that can uh, move in different ways so it can look down. I've been very fortunate to have that. They're also very expensive. There's another bit of cost. So if you call that, like say, a good tripod or a semi-decent tripod, that's like 20 to 30 pounds. Already we're up to like 80 pounds just to be able to try and do an online duel. The other thing is lighting, which is arguably one of the most important things. Anyone who has done any form of video production, streaming, whatever, knows you need to have good lighting for your webcam. If you do not have good lighting for your webcam, it starts to get grainy, which there, therefore means that you can't really see the cars, the details bad, so you have to have good lighting. So if, for example, you say you just have normal lighting like this, cool, fine, but as soon as it starts getting dark outside, lighting starts to deteriorate, you're uh, then relying on artificial light, that's when the graining starts getting really, really bad. Unless you have natural white light lights, it's not gonna look very good. Orange lights, and as you can probably tell from this a little bit, starts flickering a little bit sometimes. If you don't have proper studio lighting or something that's actually very good, can be a problem. Now, obviously that might be an easier one because a lot of people have just like lamps, so on and so forth. Might be good, but then the directional lighting will throw it off. Then you have to deal with glare if you don't have um, an even spread on the light because the glare on the sleeves is a lot more difficult than you actually think. And then one of the most important things, your internet connection. It's not about your download when you're doing these online streams, it's your upload. Because you need to upload data from your computer to a server somewhere. And if your upload, which is one of the most common bad things about people's internet, it's not your download that's normally the problem, it's your upload. Your upload is throttled heavily by your ISPs for unknown reasons that I don't, still don't understand to this day. Uploads can be way better than they're actually made out to be, so. Yeah. A lot of people's uploads constantly are anywhere between like 0.5 and 3 uh, megabytes for, you know, just kind of a very boring standard, bog standard internet connection if you're not on fiber or anything like that. If you're just on a copper connection, your uploads are going to be terrible. There's going to be lag. There's going to be dropouts. It's just going to be, in general, a very bad experience. And you might say, well, I have great internet. That's great. Not everyone does, especially if you open it up to uh, just anyone. A lot of European comp uh, uh, not a lot of European countries, including England. England has some very bad internet areas in a lot of places. It's just not that great. So already, if you want a good internet connection, assuming that you're paying for the bills yourself and you're not living at home or you're not sharing with someone, that's going to cost you anywhere between thirty to forty pounds as well for a good internet connection. 
And honestly, one of the things, this is all just money that then you have to also put towards your deck because you still need to have the cards. So this is all just money that people need to spend. And also, when the remote dueling's done, if it is done, what do you do with all that equipment? Do you sell it? Well, you're going to lose money on that as well, probably, because second-hand um, uh, push, uh, well, second-hand production equipment doesn't always retain its value. Honestly, I think it's just a really lazy, lazy solution. Um, and solution, using a very loose term there, if I'm completely honest, because I don't think it's actually that good of a solution at all. This was the perfect time for them to address the, the community on online simulators and do something themselves. Even if they just said, we realize it's not perfect, this is what we're just gonna do for now, but we are working on something, that'd be great. I think a lot of people would understand that if they said it's gonna take a year for us to properly do it because we need to properly implement the support there. We need to have online judges. We need to train them up. We need to make sure the platform is used. Um, and even if just the platform was used for only online tournaments, if it wasn't open to the public um, or allowed to be open to the public, uh, only on online tournaments, I think that would be enough right now, honestly, because everyone knows you use Dueling Book or you use uh, Project Ignis, or you, depending on if you want a manual or, phys uh, manual or automatic uh, simulator. Um, I think a lot of people will just kind of go along with it, say, okay, we'll use this, but then at least we have an online platform that's controlled by Konami um, and, and something that's good. And then you can do what you want. If, if, if Even if, for example, they said, we well, need to have the physical cards, fine, whatever. You can show that you have the deck, you can write up the deck list, take the pictures, and then you can build the deck online, something like that. I don't know if they want to make sure that you, they're getting your money um, for the physical cards. But I think they really need to, essentially, they really need to buck up their ideas with the online simulator. They need to commit to it because it's not going to go away for probably quite a while. I know that the game is a physical game. I know that having the online tournaments isn't a thing they really want to go down and they want to have physical tournaments and always have them. That's great. I agree. I think physical tournaments are way better than online tournaments in my opinion. Um, the, the Being able to just experience an online tournament, uh, physical tournament, being able to experience it with your friends. I've had some amazing holidays going to uh, like YCSs. I think probably my favourite YCS or Yu-Gi-Oh like trip in general it was YCS Prague where I went with some with Mike from the Brotherhood or friends like that. That was just an incredible weekend of just so much good memories and so much good fun. Didn't even matter about the tournament. It was just the fact that we used to go and we go to the, the tournament and that and it'd be great fun. Um, but I think they need to understand that things have changed a little bit and a lot of people's opinions have changed and it's just something that they need to kind of properly address and look into because this remote dual thing in my opinion is borderline pathetic.